I will watch expectantly. That is so important. Watching expectantly. I will watch expectantly. After praying to the Lord, in other words, praying to the Lord just brings you to a level of understanding that you are not, but God is. Hallelujah. I was looking at one of the newest models of Toyota Land Cruiser and I looked at the amount of money they are selling it. I tried to convert it. It is 66,000 US dollars, almost 70,000 US dollars. When I tried to calculate it, I tried to calculate what I get vis-a-vis the amount of money this car costs. I realized that I have to work for 42 years if I'm not tithing. If whatever I will get is what I do, I, I, I use for paying this one, and that is minus the down payment. I have to work for around 40 years. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! That means that my strength, uh, but by the end of 40 years, working for 40 years, by the end of 25 years, you are already frustrated. That means that you can never get a car. That is if you are to get in the newest model. So, trusting in God or praying to God means that you put all your trust in him. That the God who does the impossibilities to you, bearing in mind your state of financial affairs, is the God who can do what you cannot do if you are to get what you want to get at this point in time. Are you getting me? Are you getting me? Come on. You are disappointing me. Amen. Then why do we come here? Why do we come? If we don't want to hear messages through which going, God is going to work beyond our own strength, then why are we here? You don't need faith if you don't need God. Go out and work. Why have you come? Why didn't you go and work? Hallelujah. We have come to listen to the message of a God who does not depend on our wallet to, to, to bless us. I was hearing someone giving a testimony how he got a 19. But maybe he, don't, he doesn't know what the 19 means or maybe he's too shy to say it. He has been doing BCM, biology, chemistry, and, uh, and uh, mathematics. And uh, getting a 19 in such a combination, if he really made his choices very well, that means that in 2024, he will be a doctor. It doesn't make sense to you because it is too small for you. Hello? It doesn't make sense to you because being a doctor is too small for you. Isn't it? Do you know transforming a person you've been seated with and he becomes a doctor? Me who knows it, I would have clapped so loudly, but I'm having a mic. I know the reason why you're not clapping like that is because he's not your son. If he were your son, really, you would even jump off that chair and dance. Hallelujah. In a country, Uganda, where 27,000 patients have one doctor. 27,000. According to last year's, last year but one Uganda health demographic, demographic survey. 27,000 of us, we have one doctor. But now we have heard that many doctors have left, have gone abroad. Now if we are, we are having someone we are looking to, and then they tell you he's going to become one of those we are waiting for, so that uh, the numbers reduce, so that we have people to attend to us, and you remain like a piece of wood. Hmm. Hey, okay. Yeah. That is him. Where, where, where he came from, everything was... Uh, in terms of songs and we really used to get touched. Hmm? 
Eali agende kwe wae mkubo na wana kwe simite Na kwa tomu gati na kumenya mnebaza Na wawa ikide swabe na bagamba Anti mutole mwenye kuchino mwena Anti chino kwambiri kwa nguku na wewa yokubera mwe Maybe that is how I should start Hallelujah as for me, I will watch expectantly for the Lord and will wait for him for his salvation. My God will hear me all the days of my life. I, I, I think that is how we should start. Because if we are so religious, hallelujah, let me tell you one thing. We have wasted a lot of time, some of us, praying without faith, praying that you are praying God into your situation. The situation which has failed for a very long time. That I'm praying that the one who is all knowing and the one who is all powerful, the one who cannot be stopped by any circumstances, is joining my situation to turn it the other way around. Amen. It is something that is the gist of our fasting. That is the gist of our fasting. Hallelujah. How much would I clap to know that the Lord has heard my prayer and is going to change? I shall never put on the shirt I'm putting on. I shall maybe put on better. I shall never eat the way I have been eating. I am going to eat better. I shall not struggle where I have been struggling. Should I really need someone to say amen? If God is elevating one of us, from where we are excellent from where we are now and making that person an excellent person isn't that good you heard how students failed biology and yet one of you gets a B and you're not moved I have a friend of mine the parent was asking me He's been studying in one of the big schools, big boarding schools. The person got an A in chemistry, an A in biology, and uh, sorry, an A in math, and an E in biology. And I say that now, some is a church leader. Will this boy be given medicine? I said I don't know. I don't know. A A E painful mark. A, A, E. E means he only has two points. Not even a D. E. And from E we get O. It's just, just, just a few steps to O. And from O we get F. It's just, it's just two steps to F. And your own type gets a B. And you're not moved. That is God's work. That is what he had to do anyway. What, could he, what else could he have done? Hmm? What, else God, what else could God have done apart from blessing him? I'll also clap when he blesses me. It's up to him. After all, he even chooses whom to bless. He even said in his word, I will bless whom I will bless. So he blessed him. I'm not moved. Hallelujah! Waiting upon the Lord. And this is one of the most important things. Watching. Setting your mind to seeing how God is going to participate. Owning your situation. Ladies and gentlemen, Mundaba, for me I'm going because I am going to watch I always pray and I've been praying that Lord, let there not be anything that you will do that I shall take for granted. If that thing has your hand in it, however small it may appear to my understanding because my understanding doesn't measure up to the understanding of God. Let me not take it for granted. If God has blessed another person and not me, it is because he's going to bless and he's going be, it is because he's going to bless me that's why he's blessing another person that I may appreciate that if he has blessed him I am the next one in the queue yeah. 
Those who wait upon the Lord, Isaiah 40, 31, shall have their strength renewed. They shall run and not get weary. They shall mount on the wings of eagles. They shall soar like eagles far above. Eagles are known to fly far above the horizon or the horizon as you may call it. They are so sharp at doing things. They are so articulate and so accurate. They, they are so calculative when they are using their eyes. Hallelujah. For us in biology we teach that the brain of an ego it has got 40% of it. 40% of it. It has been dedicated to ordering its eyesight. Say that it has the sharpest eyesight it can see from far, 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 far above. But if the Lord says that he is going to renew you, like an, that means that there are certain things you have not been seeing, which, are going to, which you are going to see. God is giving you something much more than what you thought. You have been praying that you get a marriage. But let me tell you, in addition to that, you have not prayed for children. How many people are in marriage and don't have children? You have been praying for a good job. What if you get it and you're not paid? Hallelujah. What if you get it and you're raped from there and you're given HIV? When we pray, God answers our prayers beyond where we put a full stop or a period of our prayer. We have come to a time where God is going to reveal to us so many things. He's going to open our eyes. We are going to mount on the wings of eagles. And when you mount on the wings of eagles, that means that an eagle is a bird which flies at the greatest height. God is going to set us far above all the rest and all those who went ahead of us. That is what it means. Those who wait upon the Lord, the Lord shall give them the grace to mount on the wings of eagles. To fly far above the horizon. To be different from all the rest. To see what others cannot see. He is going to equate them to an eagle. Your clothes, your paws shall be sharper if you are an eagle. That whatever you attempt to grasp, it shall surely come to your hands. Those who wait upon the Lord. God is opening a door to have a relationship with you. This time not as a, a relationship that brings you closer to him. A relationship which brings him into the surroundings of things that have been too hard for you. A relationship which is going to make him turn this word living into life which says that whoever touches you touches the apple of my eye. That only works for people who have a relationship with God. People who have a build. A relationship where your weaknesses are going to turn, be turned into strength. Who doesn't want that? What do we do when we wait upon the Lord? Psalms chapter 5 verse 3 You watch expectantly. Psalms chapter 5 verse 3 My voice you shall hear in the morning, yes. O Lord. Mm. In the morning I will, di I will direct it to you and I will look up Hallelujah. I will direct it to you. I will look up. Why do I look at something? Why do I look at nothing? Why do I look at up? Because I know my help comes from you, O oh Lord. Not from the mountains. Not from the valleys. Not from the oceans. People are thinking of the oil economy. The oil which is going to come from Lake Albert. Our hope comes from on high. Amen. Hallelujah expecting something which comes from you. That is why my hope is kept high. That is the Lord. I am looking where I am going. I am expecting something. 
If you expect, you are waiting for a visitor and you expect him to look in, to come from this direction, do you keep on watching from this way? And you watch. And you watch. I am putting my sight where I expect my hope. My hope comes from on high. That is where I am waiting to see what is going to happen. Waiting upon the Lord means or it refers to a situation where you are expecting for God to move. God is move. If men can move and we are happy, how about when God moves? God brought the children of Israel to the Red Sea and when he brought them they had nowhere to go. The other side there was an angel blocking them from going back for those who wanted to go back to Egypt. Beyond that angel there was the army of Egypt. The host of Egypt. Pharaoh with his host. This side there was a big mountain they couldn't climb. After all the instruction was saying that this is the way. In front of them was the sea. And just, just the Red Sea. Just in front, before the Red Sea, there is Moses. Which weapon is he having? A staff. Moses was crying. The children of Israel were crying. They didn't know what was going to take place. And then the Lord commanded Moses, raise up your staff and divide the sea. They are telling a man to divide the sea he, who, who even has never divided a pond has even never heard that a pond can divide. Now he is starting. There are certain things you are going to start and you are starting at the highest level. Starting to open a sea. Not a river. Not a pond. Not a lake. But a sea. A sea. It is the second in hierarchy in having the largest volume of water. The ocean has the largest volume of water. They are telling him to open it. As Moses obeyed and he turned his staff to the sea and he rose his staff, he just saw the sea like someone opening a zip. From the beginning to the end. And he just saw the water keeping itself on one side and the water keeping itself on another side and then in between was the way. The way was a mother he just saw the way becoming dry and comfortable to move on. Like a road which has been mean, which has just been made, a modern road. And he had to pass there. Because remember, they also had chariots. So it had to be a good one. They had kids. They had their animals. They had the duck. They had the camels. They had the horses. They had many, many things. They had the cattle. Hallelujah. So God had to make sure that he makes that way. A way where there's no way. The most perfect road, the first perfect road was made in the sea. That was God's move. Where do you want God to move? God wants to move where you want him to move. He will move where he has directed you to pass. Amen. Hallelujah. Watch and listen. God may tell you go in the east. If you go to the west, you won't see anything. He will take you where you expect to see a miracle. <laughs> Putting the hope in the Lord. Psalms 130, verse 5 and 6. Please hurry up. We are time bad. I'm going to stop within the next three minutes. Psalms 130, verse 5 and verse 6. Yes. I will wait for the Lord. My soul waits. And in his word, I do hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than those who watch for the morning. Yes, more than those who watch for the morning. Do you see how he insists? I will wait for the Lord. My soul shall wait for the Lord. In others, I am watching using my body, but I've also connected my soul. I have also adjusted and changed the mindset. My soul is going to wait for the Lord. More than people who are watching for the day. 
the best and the best news for the night watchman is seeing the night changing today because that is where they hope that means that his work has come to an end he doesn't need to try he doesn't need now to really travail there is no struggle hallelujah David says that that is how I am going to this means that this man used to wake up at night and then wait and then wait and then wait ladies and gentlemen there are so many things which are taking place in the dark many things take place in the dark where we don't stay where we don't dwell hallelujah Amen. hallelujah Amen. one day I was tired I was tired I had fasted I was tired I was tired of the situation in which I was hallelujah and then I went and prayed to the Lord. The Lord seems not to have ears or I seem not to have a mouth to convince the Lord. I thought that praying was all about convincing the Lord. So I went and I said, I said, Lord, I'm not going to pray. I'm now just going to watch. Like a night watchman, I sat outside. It was so cold. So, so, so cold. I sat and said nothing. At first, it was 2 o'clock. I, I went to bed at 2 o'clock. The next day, I had to do in class. The next day, I said, now I'm going to wait the Lord. I need to get an answer from the Lord. So, I slept at 5 o'clock. And that was in the morning. I had to change my clock. The next day, I had to keep there. Sometimes I could feel the legs were freezing, but I wanted an answer. And then at last I was like dozing a little bit like this. And then a voice said to me that your boss has been robbing you, but I'm going to give him your office. I'm going to give his office to you. I said, what? Robbing me? He can't. I went to where I work. And then I discovered that my, my boss has been signing a lot of money, 4 million, and giving me only 80,000. And then claiming that we've been eating this money together. Hallelujah! Amen. My boss, my top boss didn't know. My wife didn't know. Only the boss knew what he was doing. Hallelujah! Finally, definitely, I took over the office and I, that's how I discovered all of that. That was a fruit of waiting upon the Lord. If only I had fasted and then moved away, the status quo would have remained the same. Do something you have not always been. Let me tell you one thing. The Lord will, will sometimes wait until you come to a level of frustration and disappointment that he may use that disappointment and turn it into an appointment to take you to the next level. If you have not yet been disappointed, wait a minute. We have to pray for you so that you become disappointed that your appointment may go through. Hallelujah! That's the way things of God work. Hallelujah! If there was enough wine at the wedding of Cana, then Jesus' Jesus', is, Jesus is invitation at that wedding would have been useless. But he, this man, Jesus' invitation be, became so important because of the insufficiency that was at the wedding. Hallelujah. They lacked a lot. And therefore, Jesus would be the satisfaction that they needed. And he really turned the impossibility into possibility. That is what we do when we are watching. When you are watching, you submit your wisdom and you say that, Lord, it has come to an end. Sometimes I pray to God and I say, Lord, if you still see me as a wise acre, please bring me to the level where my wise aching, my wisdom, my experience, my age, my knowledge, my meditation can no longer work where only you can work. 
Don't wait for me to pretend that Lord I trust in you. I say Lord bring it to a standstill. Bring it to a standstill. I talk a lot. Bring me to a level where I can no longer talk. If Lord that is what you want but I want to see you. I want to see you in this situation. In this storm, I want to see you. If there was no storm at the sea, the Jesus who comes the storm would have been useless. But because there was a storm, his importance was realized and recognized. My situation has reached a level where I need Jesus Christ. I have been praying, praying through this fasting that the Lord may bring an end to my wisdom and understanding. Because where I end is where he begins. And I said, Lord, bring me to your beginning. I don't care how you have been praying. Hallelujah. And I've been praying that Lord do not give me a testimony. Make me a testimony. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Let, your, let what you have done testify to the whole world. Hallelujah. And I say Lord let people see me in a position of shame one more last time that the next time they see me I'm not in that position and they may testify that we saw him while I keep quiet the Egyptians gave testimony the Egyptian soldiers that hello the God of Israel the God of Israel is fighting for them we better run away from them Israel never told them that run away from us. They never said anything. They said these people have a God. We are fighting them but there is something. We better run away. Can you imagine when your enemy is saying I better run away from this man. I better run away from this woman. He has a God. This should be the finger of God. This is not him. He has something beyond him. His God is more powerful than our God. Because the God, all the other gods had been overthrown. The God of the Nile had been overthrown. And these people had got a prophecy. When the Nile turned into blood, when the Nile turned into blood, it was a testimony that the soldiers of Egypt were going to turn into blood. So their blood was going to remain in the, their blood is going to remain in the Red Sea. And therefore the sea had to get a name, Red Sea. It had to be read all over. Hey, hey. Hallelujah. Yes, yes. Somebody say amen. amen. It seems we are fetching something which is so far away. Lastly, waiting upon the Lord makes us, gives us courage. And we are built in our strength. Our strength is charged. Our faith is charged. What do we do when we are waiting for the Lord? What do we do when we are waiting upon the Lord? Reading the word becomes part of us. Because we are yearning to hear God's voice. God's voice may be a silent voice in his word. God's voice may be a loud voice that we can see. We are bringing ourselves to the frequency at which God, God, God speaks and we hear. Hallelujah! Praise the Lord! We are bringing ourselves to that frequency. You see, when you go to CBS, even if you are near its walls, you won't hear anybody. Somebody's broadcasting at CBS there. Are you aware that we are now having radio waves passing here? Uh -huh. When you are near CBS, you will not hear anything. But a person in Mutongo will be hearing what is taking place in the newsroom. What is happening? CBS, because this person has got a transmitter which changes long radio waves into short waves that they can hear. And your ears don't have that transmitter. That's why you can't hear. Fasting and waiting upon the Lord gives the Lord time to give me that transmitter. 
God is speaking all the time, but I cannot hear. Waiting upon the Lord will enable me to give me that grace to hear his voice and you know what he's saying. And that is the turning point. The Bible says that if you shall hear the voice of the Lord your God, if you shall hear and hearken to his voice and hear the instructions that I'm giving you today, if you shall hear, not if you shall think God is speaking, if you shall hear, that means that a blessing comes with the hearing. That hearing is going to build faith because the faith comes by hearing and fear, hearing the word of God. If you shall hear, you will hear when you separate yourself from what you think has been so important. From the sleep which you think has been so important. From the job which you thought was so important. More important than even God. That you just wake up early in the morning. You run even without praying. And the devil deceives you. Go pray as you are driving. Pray as you, there is no time for prayer. And then as you are praying. Hey, I have to listen to news. Then you tune on the radio. Hallelujah. Or you jump, go to the taxi. Then you find people quarreling. The other one is what? This one is spending all the other one is what? The other. Then there is the radio. This one is putting on what? This one. But the devil knew. And in that way, he's making waiting upon the Lord very, very of less importance. Waiting upon the Lord puts God in his position. You hold him by his position, by his strength, by his sovereign power. God is sovereign over your situation. You are not dragging him because you can't. But you are dragging yourself into his jurisdiction at that time. That God may, you may hear him talk. This is the time where God comes and says come and let us reason together. Hallelujah. It is the greatest opportunity where God wants you to reason this time, he has allowed you to reason and is ready to listen and change certain things. I don't care how the size of the demon that has been chasing you. I don't care the number of demons which have been chasing you. And those ones don't matter. As long as you're waiting upon the Lord, things change in God's presence. Even the devil knows and he even won't come closer. I don't care which weakness you have and what people have been talking about you, how wicked you are, how weak you are, how stupid you are, how wise you are, how if, what a big failure you are. That one ceases to matter. What matters now is you being in the presence of the Lord, waiting upon him expectantly for him to change situations, for him to tell you that, my son, this is the way. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you for the grace that you have given us these 30 days have been in your presence. We are asking you, King of Glory, to give us more grace to wait upon the Lord. We are not just going to run away from your presence as if it has been a punishment. And Lord, we are confess and say it has never been a punishment. We have enjoyed your presence, O oh Lord. We are asking you to give us the grace even to give you more time to listen to you and to listen to new, your new instruction because we need a new anointing. We are also praying King of Glory for the anointing that you are going to put on the faces of people, Lord. And this is going to be a seal and a sign, Lord, that we trust in the other anointing which cannot be seen by human eyes. Let it, this one be a seal of your presence on our foreheads, Lord. And let it be the conclusion that begins a new era.